There's a lot of talk in the world right now about a future generation of nuclear power reactors which can burn off our stockpiles of nuclear waste. Well, what if I were to tell you that right now there is a current generation of nuclear power reactors which are operating and also have the capability of burning our nuclear waste stockpile. That reactor is one of my favorite reactor types. It is called a CANDU or the Canadian Deuterium Nuclear Power Reactor. This is a nuclear power reactor technology that was developed by Canada back in the 1960s. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing how a can-do can burn nuclear waste and also why we need more of these reactors across the world. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering and on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. And as you know, my favorite reactor type is the can-do nuclear power reactor. So let's jump right into this video. So let's get right into it. How does a can-do burn nuclear waste? Well, a can-do can uniquely use spent fuel from one of the most conventional nuclear power reactors across the world, the most popular reactor known as the pressurized water reactor or in general, light water reactors. This is simply called DUPIC or direct use of pressurized water reactor fuel in CANDU. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Okay, in short, you basically take large fuel assemblies that are used in pressurized water reactors. And remember, this is the waste product. It remains like this. You cut it up into the size of a fuel bundle, okay, which is a lot smaller. It's traditionally what goes into a CANDU reactor. Either you seal it off or you double sheet it. Next, you take that fuel and feed it directly into a CANDU. So in a sense, you're taking the waste product from one reactor and converting that into a fuel source for another reactor. So the question that you might get, is the waste product as efficient as fresh fuel for a can-do reactor? So the answer is that it is actually a lot better. And the reason why is because it has a lot more potential energy as compared to natural uranium fuel, which a traditional can-do reactor uses. So I'll explain a little bit more in this video as to why this is the case. But overall, what are the benefits of using spent fuel or nuclear waste products from a pressurized water reactor and using it in a can-do? Well, the benefit it is you're obviously reducing the amount of nuclear waste products that are producing that these reactors are producing. Although there is nuclear waste that's produced by the pressurized water reactor, there is that 50% less waste that's being produced by that can do in total. You're also providing 50% more energy as opposed to simply just burning the fuel in a light water reactor and not reusing in a can do. So you have less nuclear waste that's being produced. You have more energy output. And as you know, since we're going through an energy crisis at the moment, we need more energy. So overall, this is a really sustainable strategy strategy. And lastly, the benefits extend to the disposal of the spent fuel. And remember, DGRs or deep geological repositories where spent fuel is stored are sized up according to the amount of burn up of the waste product itself, meaning the more used or spent the fuel is, the smaller the repository, which decreases costs for mining for the location itself of the deep geological repository. And it comes with many other cost saving benefits. So you're saving costs in terms of the amount of uranium you have to mine, you're saving costs in terms of the amount of electricity that's being produced with the minimum amount of resources. And number three, you're saving costs in terms of waste management and ultimately waste disposal. However, there is an increased cost in processing the waste. Remember, even though you're taking the spent fuel, cutting up into pieces and sealing it, seems like an easy process, but it actually takes a lot of effort. So there is a little bit of extra cost in terms of processing the waste there. Another really cool advantage that is not really spoken about when it comes to dupic fuel is the advantage with performance. So what's interesting is that you can use dupic fuel strategically in a can-do reactor to operate the reactor, meaning you can increase the amount of megawatts a reactor is producing simply by using dupic fuel. One really unique strategy is using the outer channels in a can-do reactor and fueling them with dupic fuel. And what's interesting is since dupic fuel has a lot more energy as compared to that of as opposed to natural uranium fuel bundles, you can refuel the outer core pressure tubes in a can-do. So once you do that, the outermost pressure tubes in a can-do reactor generally have the least power rating. So what you could do is you can increase the power rating of those pressure tubes and in turn operate the reactors. For example, in a CANDU 9 reactor that usually has electricity production of around 935 megawatts per unit, you can increase that to around 1,100 megawatts simply by using dupic fuel. That's an 18% increase in electricity. So in turn, you're producing more energy or more electricity per reactor unit simply by using this fueling strategy. So the real question is why do dupic fuel bundles produce more energy and last longer than a natural fuel bundle? The reason why is because dupic fuel or the waste product from pressurized water reactors has around 0.9% U-235, which is the uranium isotope, which does a lot of the legwork when it comes to nuclear fission reaction. And we're as opposed to natural uranium, which has around 0.7% U-235. So there's a 0.2% increase in the amount of fissionable content in the fuel. And also dupic fuel has around 0.6% plutonium, which is an incredible fission product, which means that dupic fuel, the, the waste product from an already 
already existing nuclear power reactor last longer in a Kandu reactor, but also it provides a lot more energy as opposed to natural uranium. So the real question is, why can a Kandu reactor use the waste product of another reactor type? Why can't you do the other way around? Well, the reason why is because a Kandu reactor uses a heavy water moderator. So heavy water comes with the benefit of having increased neutron economy. And why is neutron economy important? Well, the reason why is because you can use fuels much more efficiently. So for example, in a Kandu reactor, you can take natural uranium, so uranium that comes right out of the ground, process it into ceramic pellets and use it directly in a Kandu because of the heavy water moderator. But you cannot do the same thing when it comes to other reactor types like pressurized water reactors or boiling water reactors. You need to enrich the fuels. You need to increase the fission content, U-235 isotope, by using centrifuges and other methods to increase the fission content. So there's a whole different pathway that you need to take to in order to make those fuels. But what's interesting is that the spent fuel from those reactors that are already enriched have more fission product as compared to natural uranium, which means you can use them again in a Kandu reactor. Pretty interesting. Another benefit of Kandu is that instead of having a large pressure vessel like that of a PWR pressurized water reactor, or boiling water reactor, like other conventional reactors, it has hundreds and hundreds of pressure tubes. So these tubes are great because you can refuel them while the reactors operate. And this is another advantage because if you want to develop a strategy for refueling a Kandu, it's great because you can use both natural uranium and also dupic fuel at the same time. Kind of like chess, you're, you're trying to see which channels need refueling and you're optimizing them based on controlling the reactor flux. So you're controlling a lot of the operating principles of that reactor based on which channels you refuel and there's a whole strategy behind it basically. So you might be asking yourself, this sounds like a miracle reactor. Why aren't all countries having this reactor and why aren't all can-dos across the world running on spent nuclear fuel? Well, the reason why is because there are some challenges when it comes to this. And the first challenge is that when you take spent fuel and handle it and reprocess it, it requires facilities. In order to have large facilities, to do that, you need to have enough can-do reactors on site in order to direct the fuels towards. And you also need a pressurized water reactor. You need one of those conventional reactors either nearby or in the same country in order for the spent fuel to go right to the can-do. And in the world, there aren't many countries with both types of reactors other than Korea and China. So those are the two countries which have both of these types of technologies at the moment. Secondly, a Kandu reactor traditionally is designed to insert fresh fuel into the nuclear reactor. And fresh fuel, it's safe enough to be handled with your hands. But now we're implying with this dupic fuel or the waste product is you're taking something that's radioactively active and inserting that into the Kandu reactor. So there's two ways to kind of do that. You can either use the fueling machines, which are usually using fresh fuels, but now you have to change things up. You have to optimize those fueling machines to accept those dupic fuels. Also, you have to decide whether to feed the dupic fuel from behind the reactor, going through the fuel bays and kind of pretty much where the reactor ejects spent fuel or go through the route of where traditionally fresh fuel is inserted. Either way, you have to make changes to the design. Also, another question is when you take this dupic fuel, how are you transporting it into the station? So there's a lot of different challenges when it comes to can do and you need to make certain design changes to the reactor or to the station in order to accept this nuclear waste product and introduce it into the reactor. Okay, so there's a lot of obstacles that you have to go through. Secondly, I think the two unique nations which can actually do this at the moment are China and Korea. However, I think it would be pretty cool if the Canadian reactors across Canada can be used to burn spent fuel from American reactors or we build Kandu reactors in the United States, which are consistently using the spent fuel from all of the pressurized water reactors across the United States or simply the stockpiles themselves, right? I think that's a really cool idea which can be deployed if anyone with power is watching here, any decision makers. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is one of the most interesting topics that I found when I learned that a Kandu reactor can use spent fuel from the most popular reactor type in the world. However, if you're interested in learning more about Kandu, hope you can check out some of my other videos like the Ultimate Kandu Reactor Guide, which is one of my favorite videos. Also, Kandu Reactors Explained in 5 Minutes is another really cool video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until then, take care.